Is this a thanks that I get for putting you bitches on? Is it my fault that all of you bitches gone? I should have sent a thank you note, you little hoe. Now I'ma wrap a coffin with a bow. Nikki, she just mad cause you took the spot. Worth that bitch mad cause I took the spot? Well bitch, if you ain't shitting, then get off the pot. I got some niggas out in Brooklyn who are off your top. Huh, I hear them mumbling, I hear them cackling, I got them scared. Shook, panicking, overseas, church, Vatican. You at a stand, still, mannequin. You wanna sleep on me overnight? I'm the motherfucking boy over uh, god damn it i was on the roll shit G- damn y'all what's up man it's me 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 you're tuning in to another episode of vibes podcast let's just get into the song of the week while i remember the actual words to that goddamn song shit i was on the roll i'm mad i'm angry this is jessica jolly with uh good stuff Y'all get into the song of the week. Jessica Jolly featuring Jay Ali with good stuff. Take a listen and I'll be right back. So lucky if she lets you. High performance foreign lane switching through Tribeca. Ice her wrist and neck up. Spot us in that upper echelon club. Reckless, sexist. Another word for that exit. What once was elusive is now so exclusive. Got turned on to that new swire. Hey, day girl, you get red wine. Two lips. Red bottom off to this. Big boat, no cruise ship. Loose lips won't keep it. And you knew it, but you blew it, so I slid in. Not talking about the DM, but every single PM. Glad you realized you didn't need them. Purple skies, close your eyes, baby, breathe in. Uh. Ooh, you got that good stuff, and I need it. Oh, yeah. Mmm, baby.
you guys, we're back. And um, again, that was Jessica Jolia. I believe it's Jolia or Jolia with Good Stuff featuring J. Ali. Y'all can find that track on SoundCloud and iTunes and Spotify. That is Jessica Jolia. That's J-O-L-I-A featuring J. Ali with Good Stuff. Um, that track is Booyah. I like that song. Oh, yeah. Because it puts you in a vibe. <laughs> I be plugging the shit out of this show, y'all. Just plugging it for no reason. Um, all right, y'all. I'm I'm just, you know, trying to hold on and not lose my mind. Let's get into some black shit. Okay, girl, what's all this black shit? I don't know black ass shit. Oh y'all, first up on this uh black shit list, I still don't even know who this lady is. Y'all know the Claremont twins, right? Right. I don't know what the fuck she does. I don't, I don't know what they do. So I, I, I don't know. You know, I'm just bringing y'all black ass news. So Shanae Claremont has been indicted on felony charges of theft and wire fraud, and she could face up to 45 years in jail. Now, here's the thing. She was caught um, using a credit card, or she actually ran up a credit card, ran up $20,000 on a dead man's credit card and then she was doing wire transfers and wire fraud it's like girl here's my thing y'all it's not that serious i know y'all want to stunt on the internet i know y'all want to stunt on the gram and on twitter and snapchat and all of the medias of the social but for you to be out here using a dead person's um, identity and to be using their credit cards or any of their finances because you simply want to stunt on social media because it's for no other reason. It's no other reason other than I want people to see what I have. The thing is, it's not yours. It belongs, it actually belongs to a dead man. He can't do shit with it. He dead to the bed. But I, y'all, first off, somebody, let's just backtrack. Somebody tell me what they do, like the Claremont twins. I honestly, I don't know. I did not feel like looking it up because that means, or that would have meant that I would have spent my precious time looking up people that I really don't even give a fuck about. Um, I just, I, I can't. Okay. I just can't. First off, you're not going to catch me doing any kind of shit like that. Like, I'm scared to take a dollar off of my mama's nightstand. Even though I know she ain't going to miss it, she's not even going to remember that it was there in the first place. I'm scared. I'm scared to do that. I'm scared to, shit, take money from anybody else. I'm scared to use my own fucking credit card, let alone someone else's but for you to again be out here just running up a tab on a dead man's credit card first off girl how did how how like how did you not think you were gonna get caught because you're not you're not that great I don't care who well there are some thieves out here who um they are great at their profession you're not one of them uh Sinead first off what the fuck is a Sinead Yep, please, please, just please, please stop. Um, I'm moving on because I don't, I really don't even have anything else to say about this. Let's move on to this next story, which is creeping me the fuck out. So I have not listened past once to Kanye's new album. What is it called? The Mountains, uh, I have bipolar. I don't know what it's called. His new album what the fuck is that new album called? Kanye. I don't know. I'm going to call it The Mountains because I really can't think of it right now. But Kanye has a new song out called Ecstasy, right? Right. I can't. In the song, he mentions that he has thoughts about lusting after all of his sister-in-laws. Now, y'all know it's a gaggle of Kardashian, Jenner, Chris, and, and uh, Caitlyn's. 
y'all see how I did that? It's a gaggle of them. And Kanye admits, you know, in this new song, I haven't heard the song, don't give a fuck about hearing it, just read some of the lyrics. But he admitted that he has thoughts about, you know, he lusts after all of his sister-in-laws. Now, he said all of them. Now, Kendall, I don't know who is who and which is which. I really don't know. Kendall, Kylie is the one that's dating Travis Scott. Kendall is the model, right? Okay, so I think Kylie's the youngest. Kylie's like 19 or something. She just made it over the legal age. Kanye, see, now you're just giving off creep fucking vibes. Now you're less than after little children. You're less than after kids. First off, why would you admit that in a song? Now, I know some people out here and you're married and you just have, for the women, you just have some fine-ass brother-in-laws. You just, you do. And sometimes you question why you didn't get to your brother-in-law first. I, that's what women do. I'm putting our secret out there. We do it all the time. Even if women are in relationships and you're not even married and you still have like a fine ass, he's not considered your brother-in-law, but it's like your boyfriend's brother is fine as fuck. A lot of the times, I'm not going to say sometimes, a lot of the times, if that's the case for us women, we question why we're with our boyfriend at that moment. It's like, why in the fuck did I not find your brother first? Is there a possibility that I can get with your brother? My God, he is made from pure beauty. Um, I forgot what I was talking about. Kanye, right. Here's the thing. Women, we lust after our brother-in-laws or our our, uh, boyfriend's brothers or shit. Women will lust after, you know, for the whole LGBTQ HIJK community. Sometimes they lust after their sister-in-laws and whatever. We be lusting, but we not just going to go out into the motherfucking open and be like, I'm lusting after all of y'all. I want you. I want you in my life. I want you in my booty. TMI. Sorry, y'all. Um, Y'all need to help Kanye out. I mean, he's already in like deep doo-doo shit because y'all, I, I didn't watch that interview with him on Jimmy Kimmel. Um, in which he's trying to defend Trump, but he couldn't. I don't even want to watch it. I just, I can't. But now you keep creating shit. I want Kanye to um, go to his doctors, to his psychiatrist, and tell them that he needs to readjust uh, his medications, okay? Because he needs to be in a higher dosage. Because what he currently is not taking, uh, he needs to start taking it at a higher dosage. I just, I wouldn't admit that. Like, to the world. I would definitely tell my best friends about it. Definitely tell my mama. And I think that's it. Because otherwise, everybody don't need to know that I'm lusting after my brother-in-law. And you know, for the dudes, everybody don't need to know that you lusting after your sister-in-laws. We already know that y'all lusting after them by the way you look at them. When women walk into the room Dudes be married, like hella, hella married. But if the sister-in-law is fine as fuck and then she walks into the room, that quick glance that y'all do, and then y'all do a quick glance, and as soon as she turns around, y'all just look at her ass. We already know y'all be lusting after y'all sister-in-laws. But y'all don't have to put that out in the public. So I need y'all to gather and help y'all brother Kanye out because I feel a divorce coming up. Actually, I feel some um family matters coming up in that whole clan because Kanye is now a Kardashian his name is no longer West it's Kanye Kardashian I I just I feel drama stirring up you know I feel like a Kanye and a and a what's her name Chloe is bound to happen you know Chloe's been wanting to be Kim for years so I I feel it in the atmosphere uh speaking of the atmosphere Let's talk about this next story. Y'all, she not she's not nobody's auntie because we she's been officially um traded out of the you know by the black delegates. We traded her. I forgot for who, but we did. So I'm a Rosa. Now y'all know she's coming out with this new book in which 
I think only white people are going to read it because you've been traded, girl. We don't give a fuck about you. But she's like coming out with this new book in which she's admitting that Trump used the N word repeatedly in um, White House meetings that they had. And then she also secretly recorded uh, somebody else. Uh, I forget who it is. But it's like, girl, you're not telling us shit that we didn't already know. If we, the world, are sitting here clearly with our own two eyes seeing that Donald Trump is racist as fuck, why would we not think that he's not using the fucking N-word? That he's just not going around saying nigga this, nigga that with an E-R, okay? So why, why? I'm a Rosa girl. Let me talk to you. Pull up a seat, girl. Get comfortable in your chair. <sighs> Let me just... Just listen. Stop talking, Amorosa. Why do you think that we give a fuck about what you have to say? Please answer that question. I'm waiting. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, so you don't know because we really don't give a fuck. Somebody please get her. Please get her. So what's bothering me is that you wanted to be in the White House so bad that you never spoke up when you're possibly the only black person in the room and Donald Trump is just in there be like, hey, nigger, hey, nigger this and nigger that. And you just sit in there um, like a fucking coon and a buffoon. But now since you got fired, now you want to expose and you're not really exposing him. Because, girl, we already knew. You're not telling us anything that we didn't know already. That's why I'm... <sighs> Y'all, please, y'all have to get her. Please. I'm not interested in any way, shape, or form um, reading to read her book and reading her book. I just, I don't care. I feel like she's going to, the book is probably already finished, but I feel like it's going to be information that was already passed on through social media that we all shared. It's going to be a whole bunch of quotes and information from Angela Rye. Shout out to cousin Angela. Um, It's going to be some fuck ass shit from Paris Denard. Somebody needs to get him because he, he has slipped away from us. Um, I just feel like it's going to be a lot of quotes from people, from CNN reporters. And then it's going to be a lot of... Uh, well, this man is actually racist and he's right. And it's, uh, uh, Marissa, we don't give a fuck. We just, we don't. Girl, just, whatever. I'm moving on. So y'all cousin, uh, Nicki Minaj, dropped her new album called Queen. And the internet is a buzz about this album, right? So I was like, I usually don't give in to the internet and the trends and the fads and all of that shit because it lasts but, you know, 12 hours. And so I'm like, I'm not wasting my time on that. And so I was at work, um, you know, politely not working. And I was like, let me take a listen to this album. Now, I've given the album three tries. I've listened to it thrice, right? I I can't, I don't understand why y'all like the album there's literally four good songs out of 19 like girl you have 19 songs on this album and only four of them are good and I think we all agree that Barbie Dreams is the best song on the album right okay she went in boom old Nikki that's who the fuck we've been like where is she what happened to her but I feel like the album is all over the place it's more pop-ish if I wanted to listen to some pop music, Nicki Minaj, I would have flipped on some fucking Ariana Grande, okay? Um, and listen to her scream and, and, you know, hit scream notes. If I wanted to, you know, feel like I was in fucking outer space somewhere with half of these songs. Actually, if I wanted to be deep in a fucking depression, I would have just played some country music. Because I feel like a lot of those songs are depressing. The other ones are very pop-ish. And then she has like, the rest are like rap. It's like four like trap rap songs on there. And the rest of them is like pop rap. And it's like, girl, what the, what the fuck is this album? Now, 
we can agree to disagree because I know some of y'all's like, nah, the album go hard. I give that Queen album like a solid six because that's what I give it. Now, I'm not pitting her against anybody because everybody can, you know, be, we can ride for everybody. We really can. But the album for me is just, it's like a solid six. Um, What is it? Barbie Dreams. I like that song. And then something about white, white powder, white stuff. Um, let me see. Let me, let me go back to, uh, the track list for the album and tell y'all which ones I like. So Barbie Dreams, I like Rich Sex, but those Rich Sex and, and what is it called? Um, Chun-Li, they don't count because they've been out forever. So Barbie Dreams, Hard White, um... Miami. I think that was it. Oh, and LLC. That's all I like off the whole album. Because everything else is like, I can't take this. I feel like I'm about to slit my fucking wrist. I'm so depressed at this point. Now I'm going back to traumatic moments. That's not what the fuck I wanted to think about listening to this album. I can't really get with the pop-ish Nicki Minaj. It, It never worked for me. Can't get with it. Y'all can like it. Y'all can love it. I can't. I just, I can't. I can't. But, um, so I know we all listen to Barbie Dreams like 5,000 times, right? Now, if y'all been on, um, the Instagram, a few people been in their feelings. So Young Thug is definitely in his feelings because he likes to wear dresses. And Nicki Minaj, you know, you know, politely just address that, (laughs) address that he likes to wear (laughs) dresses. Um, he was definitely in his feelings. He didn't find it funny. I forget what he put on Instagram or Twitter. Calm down. Calm down, girl. Um, Meek Mill. <laughs> I'm glad he has a sense of humor. <laughs> I used to play for dreams. No, I said the wrong thing. I used to pray for times like this face ass when I fuck him. Meek Mill has a sense of humor. He's also still in her DMs. Y'all know what the funniest thing was to me? So, first off, I still don't know who the fuck Shiggy is and what he does. I'm late. But apparently this Shiggy character caught Safari scrolling and all up and through Nikki's um, Instagram page. Now, if I'm in, uh, if I'm at a club, because clearly this is where they were, and, you know, the club is a little turnt, and I have money available to me where I can access anything, I'm going to be fucking turning up. I'm not going to be on nobody's Instagram page scrolling Um, because now you and your feelings. Sometimes I just feel like some of y'all just be, um, what's the word? Stuck. Like, move on, my my nigga. Go somewhere else and do something else. Safari, like, I think it's time you move on, sir, because Nikki has clearly, uh, or she has made it clear that she's in no way, shape, or form interested in you. Now, this could all be a ploy. And she could, you know, take you back in the next five years. But as of this moment, Safari, damn. Bro, you can't you can't get caught lacking like that. You on this girl page like a fucking stalker. Y'all get your mans. Get your mans. Um, I think that's it for black shit, y'all. That's all the black shit I have. Y'all, let's move on to what the fuck. Buck Chicago. It's Mimi Wallace reporting live from Safari's iPhone. Here are your weekly updates for what the fuck Chicago. Chicago residents have accused Chicago police of planting a bait truck filled with Nike apparel to lure and arrest innocent people. Victim Ladarion Walker commented, Oh, baby, them shits is right there. So I had to cop a few. I had to get fresh with the motherfucking uh, Beyonce and them concert. What you mean, oh, baby? 22-year-old Daniel Gassaway of Richton Park was charged with armed robbery after using a BB gun to rob another man. The two parties agreed to meet for the sale of an iPhone. Daniel realized that he didn't have money or a real gun, so he improvised. 
A CTA bus driver was robbed at gunpoint over the weekend. A man flagged the bus down as the driver pulled over to wait for him. When the man got on the bus, he pulled out a gun and hit the driver over the head and took his belongings. Everyone on the bus all agreed that the bus driver should have left his ass like all the other ones do. Those are your weekly updates for What the Fuck Chicago. You guys, I do apologize. I don't have a question of the week simply because I forgot to post one. And, um, I, I, I forgot. And none of y'all sent emails about your experience with the black church, which is what I asked y'all to do. But I, uh, just legit forgot to post the question of the week in which I had one. So, um, my bad. <laughs> she sorry. So since I don't have a question of the week, we're just going to go into the topic of the a week. Um, you know what? The topic of this week is life after college. Um, and it's entitled, I graduated now what? So I wanted to talk about this because I often, I have a lot of my friends, um, we all went to college together. So a lot of us live here in Chicago. And so I hang out with them often. And we usually just have like random conversations about being back in college. Shout out to Jackson State University. So we have um, random conversations about just being in college. And then we'll talk about life after college and how we prepared if at all, if we did. And so we just have those conversations. And so I just kind of wanted to talk about that for topic of the week, Um, because I feel like a lot of um the young people who are graduating might need help and it's just a good conversation to have so um speaking about life after college so i graduated now what um so the first point i want to get into is um graduating from college so you've graduated right it's april 28th or may or december you graduated now what you can't find a job. So it's like, why can't you find a job? Because you didn't prepare. You really didn't do any preparation. Um, you didn't uh, have any preparation. You didn't <laughs> preparation H. That's what I was thinking about, y'all. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Shout out to everybody with uh, burning ass and hemorrhoids. Um, You know, keep squeezing. You the real MVP. Um, So... For everybody, okay, so you graduated after college, you can't find a job because you really didn't prepare for anything. So it was like, okay, this is the last semester. I'm good. I'm about to graduate. But I feel like at that point, you should be preparing a year in advance. If you know that you're going to graduate on time, you need to prepare a year in advance um, so that you can have something in the lineup. Because once you graduate and you don't have anything, then you're going to be sitting there looking crazy and looking stupid. So it's like, I graduated. Now you're going to be taking six months to try to find a job. And it's never going to be, well, I'm not going to say never, but a great majority of the time, it's not going to be, especially if you have not prepared in the field um, that you've just received your degree in. So it's basically like survival of the fittest at that moment. It's like, I just need a job. I need to be working because I don't want to feel like a failure. I don't want to feel like I've gotten this degree or I've earned this degree for no reason. So a lot of the times when you have not prepared for life after college and you finally do find a job six to eight months later, it's majority of the time not in the career field that you were hoping for. So that's why I'm like, it's important to plan. It's important to plan a year in advance. Do you want to get um, an internship? Where would you like to um, intern? So don't just apply to one place thinking that, oh, I'm going to get this. Not to say that you won't get it, but don't just put all of your eggs in one basket and then just focus on that. If you want to intern um, at a specific company or with a, a specific person, 
start that process a year in advance. Contact that person, ask if they have any internships available. If they don't and you really want to work around this person or for this company, then you know, get in contact with them and see if they can create an internship. Just have a plan in advanced, um, advanced, excuse me. So the second point moving on, it's like, okay, well, I didn't prepare after college. Now, I know for myself, that was definitely me. After I graduated, I did not have anything prepared. I was not interested in going directly to grad school because I was just like, I am tired of school at this point. I'm tired of doing papers. I'm tired of going to class. My brain fucking hurts. I need a break. So I was not interested in going to grad school, even though I let a lot of my professors kind of talk me into it. So I was doing grad applications and giving them my fucking money, knowing damn well that I was not going to go, even if I got accepted, because I just wasn't ready. I wasn't in that space and that mindset. Um, so after college, I was not prepared. I definitely did not want to go back home, but I also was not comfortable with sleeping on a friend's couch because I didn't want to be that person. That right there would have made me feel like a failure. I graduated. I've just received this degree. I don't have a job and now I'm sleeping on my friend's couch and I can't even afford to pay my friend rent. Now saying that, you know, that's acceptable if you think about it now after college, because sometimes like, like I'm saying, you just don't have that plan. That's not acceptable. Now I just wanted to side note, your ass is not going to be 29 to 35, still sleeping on your friend's couch. Talking about I graduated from college. I can't find no job. Bitch, you've been jobless for 10 years. Like I'm disappointed in you and I don't even know you. Um, but <laughs> I didn't have a plan and I definitely did not want to move home. I did not want to sleep on a friend's couch, even though I had some really cool friends and some good friends who were like, if you need to stay here, you can, and you can, you know, figure it out. I wasn't comfortable with asking that. I felt like that was too much to ask. So I went back home to Chicago and one month into being home, I was like, I'm over this because I was so used to, first off, I was so used to being down South. I was so used to being at school in that that college um, world. So I just spent, you know, um, four and a half years, maybe five. Don't judge me. Almost five. Yeah, I just spent like almost five years living my best life. That was my best life, my college years. And so I got I grew accustomed to that that scene. And now for me to leave that not have any kind of plan in effect and then come back home to be sleeping in my old room with no job lined up. I'm asking everybody at this point, like, can you help me find a job? I'm asking my mom. My mom is not helpful at that point. I'm asking my dad. Nobody's helpful. Nobody can seem to find a job or help me find a job or connect me with anyone that knows somebody else who can find a job. So that's when I just got frustrated. And then I started thinking about maybe I should go to grad school just so I can have something to do so I can uh, feel like I'm not a failure. Um, and then I snapped the fuck out of it real quick because I was like, girl, no, <laughs> no, we're not doing that. But it got to a point, it came to month three and I still couldn't find a job. So then by the third month, I was like, okay, I have to reach back out to my college professors because at this point, I'm willing to go back to Mississippi and call a friend and be like, I just, I, I need to stay on your couch until I can afford to get my own place and then I'll help you. That was my plan at that point. Like that was the plan I thought out. I contacted professors they were actively trying to help me. They really were. They're like, okay, send me your resume. I'm going to forward it to so-and-so. And then I actually had some um, interviews. My professors helped me get interviews in a matter of like two to three weeks. And I couldn't get back down to Mississippi to go to the interview. So I was like, I feel fucked either way. 
And that all came from me not having a plan. It was like, I'm not prepared at all. When all of my other friends were a year in advance, they were applying to grad school or they were applying for internships or they were applying to the companies that they knew they wanted to work for once they graduated, I wasn't doing any of that shit because I really didn't know what I wanted to do beyond being an actress. So I wasn't thinking about, okay, I should apply for, you know, an internship at a theater. But then that was difficult for, uh, difficult for me also because I'm into theater, I'm into acting, but my major is criminal justice, right? Yeah, I sense judgment. So I didn't realize that I wanted to be a theater major until my junior year. And by that time, it was way too late to be switching majors because I'm like, I, I'm not about to be in um, college for another three years. I can't do it. I can't take it. So I just stuck it out with the criminal justice major. And so that prevented me from applying to um, a lot of MFA programs or going into theater because I didn't have the experience that they wanted. And so I was like, okay, well, that's out the fucking door. And then I really didn't know what I wanted to do outside of acting. So even though my major was criminal justice, I thought about it. Um, I'm like, I really don't want to go to the police academy. I don't want to be a police officer anymore. So I'm not doing that. So that's why it was difficult for me to try to have a plan or get something in place because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And that's okay. It's okay if you don't know what you want to do outside of college. But I think um, today, like I graduated six years ago, I think. Yeah, I graduated six years ago. But the kids today in college, they are more prepared like they know what they want they know where they want to work they know who they want to work for and they they just know what they want to do outside well once they graduate so they a lot of them are very organized in that sense and they have things lined up already that's a great thing because I can't say the same for myself and then even for a few of my classmates like we graduated some of us was working in uh, hospitality some of us were working in retail it was like okay I got this college degree and my ass is working at JC Penney like I'm just at this point I'm accepting a job because I need a paycheck but that's the thing that's not what I wanted for myself so I finally found a job it was like four months later and it was a bullshit ass job I quit in three weeks because I was like this is stupid I don't even think this is real but getting back to the point it's like okay what's your plan so you have to make sure you have a plan. So that ties into the third point of, you you know, you don't have a real plan. And so you move back home. For me, that was like a low moment because it's like no college graduate wants to move back home once they've literally just graduated college. Because it was like, I left here because I wanted to fucking leave here. You know, it, it wasn't uh, I'm never coming back home or going back home. It was I want to go and have new experiences. I want to go off to another state and have this um, college life experience. I'm trying to get away from home. But then you don't have a plan. You thought nothing out. You didn't. To, um, you know, confer with your professors who've been basically throwing opportunities at you because that's what was going on with me. I had professors like sign up for this or apply for that. Uh, do it now. So by the time you graduate, you'll have something ready. I just wasn't listening because I was like, oh, you know, I'll do it. And then thinking that I had time when I really didn't. So again, have a plan in order because if you don't want to go back home after you graduate, then like I said, by junior year, beginning of your junior year, you need to be applying for all kinds of stuff. You need to be applying for internships, jobs, um, whatever they have available, whoever has anything available for the company or the person that you want to work for. And then my last point is, okay, so 
you've graduated. Now what? What are your options? What are your options once you've graduated, but you don't have any kind of plan in order? So the options I'll tell you, if y'all are in the Chicago area, or what I know for sure here in the Chicago area, if you just graduated, any kind of job in social services will hire the shit out of you immediately. They don't care if you've never worked in social services before, but because they just need people so badly, they will hire you and you will get, you know, benefits, very shitty pay, because that's what it is in social services. You'll get terrible pay, but you get benefits and you'll have that job. So there's always a job that's willing to hire, but I'm saying like 85% of the time, if you don't have a plan, that job is, is not going to be in the field that you want it to be in at all. But I think like social services and criminal justice for me kind of go hand in hand because they all work together. So that kind of worked out, you know, for me, well, with my degree, did not want to do so social services, didn't really want to do anything criminal justice, even though I went and got the damn degree, but it was too late for that. So I was, um, applying for theaters once I got home and going on auditions and trying to get theater jobs and it was not happening because I couldn't give them a resume with any kind of you know experience on it so what are your options you just graduated now what are you going to go work at a fast food joint are you going to go work in retail are you going to do um volunteer work are you going to just start passing out resumes it's like if you don't want to get to that point, if you don't want to be that person where you feel like nothing you're doing is working, then get a damn plan together. You can start your plan by sophomore year. You really can. So by junior year, you know what you want to do. And in junior year, you can start applying to places. And then by the time you graduate, you would have applied to so many places. And now you have, those are your options. It's like, I have so many job offers, I need to see which one I want to take. That's the point where you want to be at. That's Those are the options that you want to have. You want to be in a space so great where it's like, I have 15 or 20 job offers, um, each with great salaries, all in the field of my choosing. I have to figure out how I'm going to choose which one I want to work for that's what I the place I would have loved to be in or at when I graduated but I wasn't prepared and I didn't even attempt to prepare anything I didn't attempt to apply for anything because I thought that I have time so the moral of this is basically like for college graduates if you're in college now and you are in your junior year or if this is the beginning of your senior year you don't really have time, especially if this is the beginning of your senior year. You need to start applying for shit right now. If you're in your junior year, you have time. But know that you have to have a plan in order. Because if you want to be back at home, sleeping on the couch, because your mama turned your old room into a damn computer room, or she turned your room into a damn closet, basically. So now you really don't have a room. And you want to be sleeping on the couch unless you want that in your life, then get yourself a plan and get it in order. Um, so that's it for topic of the week, y'all. I just I just wanted to talk about that because I feel like a lot of people may need that guidance. It's like, okay, what do I do? I'm about to graduate. I just want, especially um, millennials, like once you graduate from college, I just want everybody to have a plan because I don't want anybody to be going back home and then being like, oh, I'd rather be back in school than to be dealing with this shit. So you guys, make sure you have a plan, put it into effect, apply, apply, apply. All right, yeah, let's move on to Ratchet Drink Chronicles. You guys, I'm keeping it simple. You know, I'm cutting back on my drinking. <laughs> no, I'm not. I just wanted a burr. So today, I'm not being racist, y'all. I swear I'm not. But y'all know I'm half Mexican. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. 
so today I just wanted to, you know, have me a Corona with lime. I love a good Corona. Now my beer used to be a Heineken, but as I've gotten older, Heinekens are a little too strong for me. So I just want Tid, a good old Corona, and I cut up fresh lime, and I dump that bad boy in there, my motherfucking self. Oh, baby. Um, so get y'all self a cold Corona and uh, pop a lime in there and kick back. Oh, y'all. And watch Insecure because it started. Season three, Insecure. Make sure y'all watching it because we're definitely going to talk about that next show. All right, y'all, let's get into the shout out of the motherfucker. <laughs> so first shout out goes to uh, uh, my friend Ashley. Hey girl. So Ashley and I had a really dope writing session um, this past weekend. We are entering a contest from, y'all know uh, actor Erica Alexander who played Maxine Shaw, attorney at law. So her company called Color Farm Media has a competition going on now for um, people of color um, and creative. So she wants you to submit, whether it's a short film or a web series, uh, submit a trailer uh, to the site Color Farm Media so that you can enter the contest to possibly get your project funded. So Ashley and I were writing our scripts on uh, Friday. Um, and we already have the trailer and everything written out and we're going to get that filmed. But we were just sitting there writing the whole script and uh, we're almost finished. <sighs> we was tired, y'all. We was tired as shit. But I just wanted to shout out Ashley. We did a good job and I'm excited about our project. Um, shout out to Delanato and our casting for the web series. You guys, I'm working on another web series this time. I'm going to be in it, and I'm also going to be directing the episode. Now, what you all can do is go to YouTube, and you can go to the YouTube page. It's called Black Pages International, not Back Pages, y'all nasty asses, um, or Back Page. Black, Black Pages International. Y'all can go to the YouTube page, and then you can watch the... A stage play that I'm in called Save the Last Dance for Me. So what I'm um, going to be doing with that, or uh, Delanado and I, this is his project, we are going to continue it, but it, it'll be in a web series format, and I get to direct it. So I'm really excited about that. So shout out to that, and we had a casting uh, this past Saturday. And um, thanks for the people that showed up. I'm excited about that. Um, shout out to Kim Weir. And the photo shoot, you guys, I also do photography. I do a lot of shit. But I did a, a, a photo shoot for Kim, who's also entering the Color Farm Media Contest. And I got to do a photo shoot uh, for her cast. And uh, we were at Palmer Square Park over the weekend. And some dope, really dope pictures. I already edited everything and sent them back to her. I got some really dope pictures, so I'm excited for her. So shout out to Kim Weir and her project. Um, and then last but not least, shout out to my bestie, my best friend Dominique for the Fun Fest. Now, it was supposed to be an auntie dinner, right? Or an auntie barbecue, because this is what we agreed on. But y'all, <laughs> I had so much fun at this damn backyard barbecue whatever it was our big asses I forget what it's called we were out there doing a slip and slide beer shooting liquor drinking it was just a whole bunch of shit going on we were out there barbecuing we and by we I mean them because I didn't barbecue shit there there was literally like a slip and slide thing out there and we created our own game um I forget what the thing is called, but our drunk asses were like doing a beer contest where you had to poke a, a hole in the beer can and crack it open and then drink from the hole and see who could drink the beer the fastest. So we were out there like some real drunks doing that shit. And then the slip and slide thing 
was so fun. You guys can go to my um, Instagram page, uh, M-E-M-E, Mimi the Actress, and you can see one of the videos that I put up. <laughs> I definitely cheated. It's okay. You know, I'll admit that. But I had a lot of fun. So, again, shout out to my best friend, Dominique, for creating this um, auntie barbecue. We got to do it again because I had a lot of fun. It was a lot of drinking um, and a lot of dancing. Y'all, we was doing a lot of twerking afterwards, you know. Once you get to a certain age, you get tired, so you can't really be running and jumping and doing all of that shit. But then we did. It was a lot of twerking going on and um, a lot of alcohol. First off, <sighs> Dominique tried to kill me. She put a half a fucking bottle of Tito's vodka in this mystery drink she created. And it was delicious. It was. But I was literally like 10 minutes into drinking this drink and then I got drunk. And I felt it. I felt it going in my blood and in my stream. Okay? And I was like, Jesus, I'm drunk. Help me. So, shout out to my bestie, Dominique, for um, giving me liquor poisoning, alcohol poisoning, and then providing the fun. Um... Oh, and then you guys, so moving on, that's it for shout outs. So you guys, remember I said, you know, every week now, from now on, we have a new segment called Syrup Free. Now, I like that title. Y'all, again, don't steal my shit. But for Syrup Free, this week in Syrup Free, I just wanted to let you all know. So this week's uh, focus is... Simply, you have no control, so let it go. There are so many of us who stress about things, who worry about things, and we give ourselves anxiety over so many things that we really, when we really simply think about it, we don't have any control over it at all. We don't have control over the outcome of things, but we stress about it, the outcome. We get anxiety about it. We um, get to a point where our we let our health decline because we stress and worry. But then we never really sit down and think about, I don't have any control over this. I have no control over this. And once you really think about that, you just, at that point, the the next thing to do or the the best thing to do at that point what would make sense was to would be to simply let it go whatever that issue is that you literally have been worried about for weeks and you've done it you've done what you needed to do but you're still worrying about it let it go you don't have any control over the outcome you don't have any control over other people's decision making that's for other people to do. You have no control over that. You have no control over how your day is going to end. You have no control over what's going to happen in your future, but yet you continue to worry about it. Y'all, I just, I had an aha moment, and once I realized I was over here stressing and having anxiety attacks and worries, and I was just like, therapy and went to my therapy session and had an aha moment in therapy and I just had to share that with my therapist and she was just looking at me like oh I see you figured it out and I was like yeah I am a little late I'm behind I'm left behind but I'm catching up so you guys that's that's the focus um if you have no control let it go it's that simple don't stress yourself out don't beat yourself up don't let your health decline that shit go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> but that's real talk, y'all. You have no control. Let it go. So that's it for share up free. And then what's the next one? Oh, there we go. Focus. Um, you guys, make sure you go and follow Guys Podcast on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs> 